I'm going to go through five different online business models that you can do in your spare time or as a side hustle or even become a full-time job for you. I'm also going to give you one at the end. I'm going to give you a bonus one where I did this in the past and it still works to this day because I've actually tried it before. I just didn't want to get into it because I already have a few businesses of my own that are doing well and I just don't have time for this, but it is a great little job that only requires sending emails. So if you're looking to start a business or create some sort of income on the side from your main job, then make sure to watch until the end and I'll give you these five or six, I should say, uh, cool little businesses that you can actually begin to create an extra 100, 200, even into a full-time job. All right, so let's get into it. And obviously you'll see the first one. It is selling print-on-demand products. This is what I do. This is one of my businesses. I mainly sell on Merch by Amazon. Basically what you're doing is you are creating digital products, meaning digital designs that go on products like t-shirts, coffee mugs, phone cases, pop sockets, uh, totes, canvas art, all that type of stuff, um, even stickers. So you don't have to sell on Merch by Amazon to do this. You can sell on other websites, which I'll get to in a second. But Merch by Amazon is the biggest one uh, just because they already have all of the customers for you. So basically you go in, you create a digital piece of art or a digital, or a digital design for a t-shirt, let's say and you just upload it create a title create a description and they'll sell it for you and they do all the work so once it sells you get a royalty merch by amazon it's like anywhere between two dollars and five dollars or six dollars depending on the product you sell other products will be different depending on the prices um, that you set them at um, but you can also do things like red bubble you can do stickers you can do t-shirts you can do phone cases posters all types of stuff that you could that you could sell to you, that you can make make designs for and sell on these websites and either get a royalty or some sort of commission or a profit margin on what you on what you sell. I think Etsy is the same way you can create an Etsy store. Etsy is probably the second largest print on demand like print on demand site. It's not really a print on demand site, but you can use print on demand. All you got to do is hook into uh, integrate it with Printify or Printful or something like that where they have a catalog of products that you can actually choose from and then your store store would be, uh, you know, full of a bunch of different items. I think this is one of the easier businesses to start, especially if you have no experience doing any of this. So before I get into the other four or five that I'm going to go through, I'm just going to say I'm going to go through these quickly. And if you actually want more information on how to do these, just go on YouTube and search for it, learn more about it and see if you want to get into any of these, because this video is not going to go into any detail on any of these um, ideas. Most of these businesses that I'm talking about, I have done before and has worked in the past for me so just grab one of these ideas write it down do some research and figure out which one you want to go with so the second one I want to talk about is actually creating your own product creating your own service or creating your own piece of software now this one is probably the harder of all of the businesses that I'm going to talk about here in this video but it's going to be probably the most fruitful and the one that is going to make you more money in the long run and it's actually sellable so if you create a brand out of these out of this product that you're gonna sell or a piece of software that you're gonna that you're gonna sell to people this is something that other businesses and other people would want to buy especially investors would want to buy from you so there's a lot of upside here so the reason I'm bringing this up this page up that says nine useful products that will solve your everyday problems is because in order to create a product or a software or a service you need to be solving a problem now the problem could be as easy as something as a product or or a software that makes things faster to do it doesn't have to be a specific problem like these where these scissors have a laser on it and it helps you cut a straight line it could be something that just makes things simpler or makes things really easy to do or makes things faster to do now if we take a large example of this and and say uber or lyft uber or lyft they don't actually sell the the cab or the taxi service they sell time they sell an easy easier way to do something. So with a cab, you'd actually have to call them up, schedule something, and then they would pick you up. Or if you're in a big city, you'd have to go outside, wave one down, and then get in. With Uber and Lyft and all these types
types of services they're selling time so you just go on your phone and you say you know pick me up I want to go here and it's there in a couple minutes so it's saving people a lot of time and hassle it's not necessarily creating a solution to a like a physical problem so just keep that in mind so for physical products if you're gonna create one of those basically you would need to set up a website and then you would need to brand it correctly and obviously create prototypes get it created by someone or create your own if you can do it in your house that'd be great if you could create them quickly and efficiently but if you wanted to scale you're gonna have to hire a manufacturer um, find a manufacturer of it and then um, use advertising like Facebook and even YouTube and and Google to really scale up that business drive traffic get sales that way and then it would grow from there this is only gonna work though if the product is actually good and it's a big enough problem in the marketplace if the problem is really small and only has a finite amount of people that have this problem then you're probably not going to want to do that because it's not going to scale and you're just going to have a really hard time making money because you're going to have to buy product in larger quantities eventually to get your cost down and your um, profit margins up all right so the third one i have for you is online arbitrage this is basically what retail arbitrage is if you have any idea about that it's basically retail arbitrage is where you walk into a store you buy something that's on sale or at a discounted price that's selling for higher than what it is on another website like Amazon and then you would go buy the product at the retail store sell it on Amazon or sell it on eBay what online arbitrage is is basically looking online on websites like Target and Kohl's and, and whatever websites you visit see something on sale buy that and then resell it on eBay or Amazon and this actually worth works both ways you could buy stuff on Amazon and sell it on eBay you could buy stuff on eBay and sell it on Target or Walmart.com um, there's a lot of different ways to do this but most people go the route of selling through FBA so Amazon Amazon's fulfillment by Amazon service which means you just buy product you package it up you send it to Amazon and Amazon picks packs and ships all your orders they take a fee and you get the rest now the way this all works is you will need to go in and find these deals and that's the hardest part about this online arbitrage business is where is actually finding the deals so what you're gonna need to do is find a leads list you need leads coming in every day because the the hardest part of this is actually finding the deals it will take you hours upon hours upon hours of doing it manually um, when you can just buy a leads list and go from there one of the biggest lead lists there is is tactical arbitrage basically they give you products that you can source for strictly for uh, Amazon FBA basically you go in and you sign up for an account I think they do have a free trial I haven't done this in a while I have used this site before but I haven't used it lately it's anywhere from 50 bucks a month to a hundred bucks a month um, and you will be able to see all their their leads that they give you the site that you can buy it from and then the FBA prices and the, the best seller ranks your profit margin the amount of profit that'll be the the sales velocity there's a lot of things that you need to know so for online arbitrage make sure to do some Google searches do some YouTube searches learn about it for a while um, you know take a week or two to learn every detail that you can um, and then start trying it and my advice to you with online arbitrage is to start small start with a small budget say a hundred two hundred maybe five hundred dollars um, buy a bunch of stuff send it in see what um, uh, works and you don't I would I would rather you buy multiple products than multiple units of one product because if if you're just starting out you may spend five hundred dollars on let's say 75 products or 75 units of one product but then that products price changes on Amazon or the bestseller rank just you know drops dramatically and you're not selling through that's not what you want to happen especially when you're just starting out um, when you're just starting out you want to go kind of wide in the product selection um, and then very few units per item that you're buying just to kind of hedge your bet a little bit so you're not putting all your money into one basket all right so the fourth one I want to talk about is actually creating a podcast YouTube channel and an audible count I guess if you want to say it I don't know what audible is called but um, audible is basically where you people download uh, podcasts or books or whatever um, but you can create your own books and your own podcasts and YouTube channels out of one piece of content so Jarvis is actually something that um, it's an AI writer so it can write uh, blog posts it can write head 
headlines, it can write different types of content. It can also write full-fledged like books for you. So you could take these uh, pieces of text and hire someone to read it, or you can read it yourself, and then create that into um, something that you can sell on Audible, maybe a book on Audible. Then you can put it put it on Anchor as uh, your own pod podcast. And then you can create that audio and turn it into for YouTube. So you can create your YouTube channel. So this one piece of content can create technically three, four, five different streams of income for you if this is something that you would want to do. Now with this, um, I do have a couple tips for you. The first one is to, you know, start something or create content in an area that you enjoy. So if you like talking about finance or uh, cryptocurrency or something like that, try and, and make your, your channel and your podcast in a specific niche about that. And then you can actually write this yourself. You don't need Jarvis. Jarvis could definitely help you if you really wanted to scale and create, you know, maybe shorter form content too. Um, but you don't need Jarvis. You can actually hire um, a different writer. You can hire someone on Upwork to create scripts for you. Um, and then you can read them and create YouTube videos, podcasts, and all that stuff from that. Now, this is, isn't the only way to create a YouTube channel. It's not the only way to cr create a podcast. Obviously, you can go in and just start talking and creating videos and content around stuff that you actually enjoy um, because you probably already know a lot of stuff about that. There's a lot of ways to do this, but I think um, using Jar Jarvis for short form content and then using your own knowledge and research and maybe even a script writer uh, for your longer form content is the way to go with this. I don't think with this method, you're going to make a ton of money in the short term, but I think if you do this over two, three, four years, um, you can make a lot of money doing it, especially if your content really um, entertains, resonates with people in your in your niche and is a little bit, you know, entertaining. So, so look into that if you are someone who wants to create content on the web. All right. So the fifth one I want to go through is actually being an affiliate. And I'm going to talk about ClickBank here because ClickBank is a digital uh, market place and you can promote affiliate products through ClickBank and they're all digital products. So they're like video courses and downloads and, and stuff like that. Basically what you want to do is find a product to sell on here. And then what you're going to use is Google news sites and um, you're going to actually buy Google news posts on sites and put your affiliate links in those posts. And hopefully they rank in Google for the news sites. And then you can get your commissions via that way. This one um, I'm trying right now and hopefully I can create a, another video on it um, for the future. Uh, I'm going to see if this one works. I have not tried this one before, but it seems like it's okay just to make some money here and there. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to create a full fledged, full fledged business out of this. I think if you have the right products at the right time, then you can create, um, you know, a hundred to $200 a day. Um, it's just the consistency is not going to be there. So over on Fiverr, you can see that if you search for um, Google news site, these are all the listings and they will, people will write or, or publish your article on their Google news site, which will then rank in Google for the specific keywords that you're going for. And the keywords that you're going for are going to be related to the actual product you're promoting. I think the key to success with this one is to find new products that are on ClickBank that are being searched for so you can really leverage the, the virality of that actual topic or that actual product. Then when people search for it, they hit the Google News site, which has your affiliate link in it, which will then lead to the ClickBank product. And if they buy the product, you'll actually get a commission in your ClickBank account. All right. So the last one I want to talk about is something that I did in the past and I've actually sold that business about four or five years ago for uh, quite a bit of money. Um, five figures, not into the six figures or anything, but it was only about nine months old when I sold it. So, and what that website was, was basically a deals website for books. So I would create, uh, I created a website. It was a landing page. It just said, you know, if you want deals on these types of books, sign up. And I did that through Facebook advertising. And this was back in 2014 ish. So Facebook ads were a lot cheaper back then. And I was able to gather about 40,000 emails in a relatively short amount of time with some investment on my own. From those, I would send out daily emails about book deals on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And when people would buy those, all those links would be my affiliate links. And then I would get a commission off of all those sales. So this is a business that you'll need some money to start up, ideally between $500 and $2,000, because you're going to have to run some ads to get people to sign up to your email list for these deals. And it could be, it doesn't have to be books, it could be deals.
deals like this is brad's deals they have deals on every single thing here but if you're interested in like hunting stuff you could create a hunting type of deals website where it's only hunting stuff and then you can go and find the deals yourself on different websites and then every day just send an email to your email subscribers with your affiliate links in those emails or send them to your own website and then have the affiliate links on that website and then they go to the website and then they buy and you get the commission i think this can work in a lot of different niches and i i don't think it's that expensive to start i mean you're gonna have to buy a website you're gonna have to use an email software um so that's probably about 20 to 30 dollars a month um, and then you're gonna have to invest in some advertising to get some email subs to get about a thousand email subscribers you can figure out your revenue per email subscriber per month and then once you do that for a few months you know like okay for every email subscriber I have I'm making 50 cents a month or something like that so every thousand email subscribers that I have I'm gonna make five hundred dollars so ideally you would want to get people for get people on your email list for less than about two dollars because then your so your break-even point would be about three or four months you know you have to figure out those numbers on your own for each individual thing so if you wanted to do hunting stuff um, or if you wanted to do kids stuff or um, maybe even specific sports teams and stuff like that they they always have deals on on sports team of sports uh, stuff there's a lot of different things that you can do um, I didn't really think about this when I was putting this in the video but there's a lot of different things that you can do uh, for deals websites and it doesn't have to be a large website it can be a very niche website your your email open rates are going to be higher because people that are in that niche actually want those types of products because it's their hobby or or something like that and they want to see more of that stuff you're going to have a higher conversion rate higher open rates it's going to be a really really decent business and this is one that you could sell also all right guys that's it for my uh business ideas i have for you if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe we'll see you in the next one